Good evening and welcome to tonight's Half Stone Half Hour. I'm Hammy Bellcroft Cast. Welcome, how are you? Hope you're fantastic this Tuesday night. Sorry we went around last night busy, had a few things to sort. Uh, very much trying to keep to three, four episodes a week at minimum. Five episodes a week is the ideal. Um, tonight, without further ado, we are going to be picking our own arena. It's Tuesday, it's Arena Tuesday, so what we do is jump in and with folks in the chat, we go ahead and pick an arena deck. Um, you guys voted already, I had uh, three options, and you guys went with Mage, so let us jump in, grab a Mage, and start picking those cards. You pick however this arena is going to be going, it could be lovely, it could be terrible, I'm totally at your whim. So be nice or be nasty, it's entirely up to you. Mage was the popular vote, so Mage it shall be. Let us jump straight in there. I just want to see if I can recover the sound here, it's either a little bit quieter, there's something up with my headphones. Hmm. It's an interesting one. Let's see what's going on there. I knocked something somewhere or another. Okay. Gonna have to ask you guys in the chat if you can actually hear the sound there. So, mage, mage, mage. What are we going to be doing with mage? Well, first up we have none other than a three pick. And the three pick we have is Ravenhold Assassin, so coming in at seven mana, seven attack and five health. Uh, a good late game finisher, you drop it in, it's going to be probably guaranteed to do some damage unless there's a significant indirect damage that our opponent can drop down. A Rethral Arcanist, if you control a secret at the end of your turn, game 2-2. Two, two. So that gets down, I know you've got a couple of secrets down, it's going to be doing pain. Uh, real, real pain, so strong. And then Argent Commander, the six mana, charge divine shield. Do remember, of course, that that was buffed down a bit. Stop picking, and of course we do have people in the chat picking away the cards for us. So our first pick, are we going to go for Ravenhold Assassin, Arethral Arcanist, or Argent Commander? Now the Argent Commander, as I was saying, it used to be 4-4, it was debuffed a bit down to 4-2, and still a very, very strong card set in a lot of decks, it just gives that trading ability. Um, so with the bubble, you can charge in, you're going to take some damage, but it's not going to get killed, and then you can swing back in to do a bit more damage as well afterwards, or your opponent will trade it away, but it gives you that one play to try and do some damage. At the moment, we've got votes for Argent Commander, um, so it looks as though Argent Commander it is. Let's jump in and grab the Argent Commander. Welcome to you, those of you joining live. So that is pick number one. And the next we have Frost Nova. We have the Frost Wolf Warlord, or the War Golem. Frost Nova, freezing all enemy minions. Um, so that is excellent. Um, slows people down, of course, no damage, but a nice control option there. Next up, we've got the Frost Wolf Warlord, gaining one one for each other friendly minion on the battlefield. So if we are swarming out with a bunch of minions, then Frost Wolf Warlord very very strong there. And last but not least, the War Golem. And the War Golem is just one of those cards. It's just solid. And in terms of solid, we've got that 777. Um, you can drop it. It's going to potentially do the damage. Um, chat vote is Warlord, so let's grab that Warlord and keep going. So, two high cards so far. The next we have Flame Strike. We've got Sorcerer's Apprentice. And we have, last but not least, the Mana Worm. Now, those three cards, incredibly strong. You see them in a bunch of constructive mage decks. Flamestroke is the mage AoE, area of effect clearance. Four damage to all enemy minions. It has to be on turn seven, but we'll have to be doing some significant damage there um, and really gets things off the table. Sorcerer's Apprentice, spells costing one less. Two mana, three attack, two health. It's a solid core card. See that come a bunch, makes all of your spells cheaper, so a tough decision there. And last but not least, the Mana Worm, and you'll see Mana Worm in a bunch of Mage constructed ladder decks, just because whenever you cast a spell, you gain an attack, and Mages throw spells like crazy. So, a real solid three there. Um, the chat vote is to go with Flame Strike. I do agree on that, because Flame Strike could just come in oh so useful in the late game, but both of those other two cards solid. So, let's go with the Flame Strike and see. Um, what we get after this. Next we've got the Reckless Rocketeer itself with its 5-2 craziness. We've got a Young Dragonhawk and we've got the Blood Sail Raider. So that's probably not, that's more of just like a, a, a neutral minion uh, choice really. The Reckless Rocketeer, high mana, but you get the charge and the high attack. Um, no, to very low health means that's going to be wiped off the table pretty quickly. Young Dragonhawk with Wind Fury. If you're dropping that turn one you're probably doing a couple of damage um, on turn two might be able to trade something off the table, for example, but 
Michigan Buffett, that one health is really disappearing. The Blood Cell Raider, um, attack equal to the attack of your weapon. Uh, we are not <laughs> a weapon deck. So the chat's gone with the Reckless Rocketeer. Thank you very much. Making good progress here. Next we have Stranglethorn Tiger. We've got another Frostwolf Warlord. And then the Acidic Swamp Ooze. So if you've seen previous episodes, that Stranglethorn Tiger, again, just a very solid stealthing mid-game option to do some damage. Frostwolf Warlord, again, oh so strong, um, just because it gets buffed up for the more minions you have. But the chat have elected to go for the use, and that will be for, not only is it 232, so it's got the great stats for a two-mana drop card, it's got that battle cry of destroying a weapon. It is tech for us. And that could come in handy if we play against some kind of weapon-based deck, whether it's Paladins, Warriors, all that jazz. Next we've got the Senjin Shield Master, known for his Tazdingo call as he drops onto the field, the Scarlet Crusader, and then last but not least, the Frost Elemental. So Senjin Shield Master, solid mid-game, basic tanking, taunting card, does a bit of damage, will stick up a wall. Scarlet Crusader lets you do those trades again, like the Argent Commander with Divine Shield. Low health, but the bubble makes up for it with the fairly solid stats for a three mana card. Last but not least, the Frost Elemental. The Battle Cry of Freezing a character um, could be quite handy and is the additional effect that benefits from for its slightly more expensive mana card. The Shad has gone with the tank. Interesting, interesting stuff. Next, Frostbolt. Being fairly kind to me so far. Thank you very much, guys. Um, we've got a Frostwolf Grunt and we've got, again, another Stranglethorn Tiger. So, the Frostbolt. Uh, just such an excellent mage spell, free damage, a freeze, if we get any spell damage cards, anything like that that buffs spell damage, Frostbolt for its mana cost is just strong, strong, strong. We've got the Frostwolf Grunt, and welcome to additional people joining the chat, it's great to see. Frostwolf Grunt for the two manage taunt in the mid game, and then the Stranglethorn Tiger we've already gone for. Oh, we have a tied vote. We have one person jumping in and voting for a Grunt, uh, the other for a Frostbolt, because one of you has been picking a bunch of cards. I'm going to go with Bow 2, Nuclear Pro. You can have your Grunt. Um, a bit of a tough decision. Hopefully we'll get some more Frostbolts later, but it is your guys' choice. I can pick in the event of a tie. Streamers rules. Next up, we have Shieldbearer, the one mana tank of goodness, the Iron Bee Cow. Um, Again, a nice little tech card there. And then the Finn Creeper, the solid tank also. So we're at 7 out of 30 cards now. Shield Bearer, again, um, just really sticks a wall that is tough for your opponent to get across in the very early game. Um, seen in a lot of Zoo Warlock decks, uh, for example. The Iron Bee Cow, Battle Cry of Silencing a Minion. Uh, very strong as well. We'll get knocked out, but you'll drop it in for something. And then last but not least, the Fen Creeper is really just, again, for the five mana, a bit expensive, but a tank at that particular stage. So the Owl is unanimously decided upon as the card of choice, and we'll jump in there. Next up, we've got a nice set of options. We've got Polymorph. Oh, a Polymorph would be very, very nice at this point in time, um, at the risk of influencing you guys. Next, we've got a Dark Line Dwarf, and then last but not least, an Ice Lance. So Polymorph is your mage crowd control, lets you just take those horrible threats, whatever they be, on the table and for four mana, neutralise it. And then with the mage power, you can pick something off. Dark Iron Dwarf, a nice buff, but generally used more in decks that swarm with minions, given that you're going to be buffing a minion for two attack, just for one turn only. And last but not least, the Ice Lance, freezing the character, and then if it's already frozen, you can do an extra four damage for one mana. Unanimous vote in the chat, thank you guys for being nice, a polymorph it is. And then next up, what can we get? The draft has been quite kind to us. We've got a Gadgetzan Auctioneer, we've got an Angry Chicken, maybe that's not quite so kind. And last but not least, we've got a Mana Addict. So the Gadgetzan Auctioneer, seen in Miracle Road decks, anything that throws a lot of spells around can benefit from this, and just that draw power is insane particularly the more cheap cards you've got, low cost spells combined with the Gadgets and Auctioneer, card draw a plenty. Angry Chicken, comedy card, um, if you can somehow buff its attack <laughs> and do some damage to it, you have a six attack minion for one mana, which is amazing. And then last, we've got the Mana Addict. Uh, whenever you cast a spell, gain two attack this turn. Um, we've got a split vote in the chat, and I'm probably going to go with the, the less uh, voted option in terms of people who have picked less cards for the time being. Um, mana Addict, now if you look at our mana curve, the Mana Addict can snowball and become ludicrously strong. Um, again, anything where you can add additional spell power for not too much. So let's go with the Mana Addict in terms of diplomacy. Um, but as the chat become equal on votes, I will go and cast my deciding vote more along my lines, perhaps. Let's see how it goes. And next up, we have the Gold Shaft. We've got the Tauren Warrior. 
got a very tanky three pick here and we've got a nice barrier to round that off so the footman turn one not much to say about him one attack two mana he can trade some stuff away before he hits the floor three mana tauren warrior taunt and rage two attack i do like this card because as a mage i can also use my hero spell power to do one damage and ping all of these various enraged cards so my ping i mean i can use my own abilities to do damage to them and trigger the ability so that suddenly becomes a 5-2 taunting beast which could be pretty strong last but not least we've got ice barrier as soon as my hero is attacked gain eight armor we've got a split vote and one for the tauren one for the gold char footman um, i can see logic in both if you look at our mana curve in the middle there um, i don't really have much in the early game yet but those two two drop three two drop four two drop okay i do have a bit of early game but it's all turn two sort of drops um some interesting options i'm almost tempted because the chat is split to go for an ice barrier and the reason for that is because whenever i get that if i just throw it down it's immediately making me harder to kill but i think i'm gonna go with on this occasion i hope another ice barrier comes up and i'm gonna go with the tour and warrior I see some lovely utility in that. So next up, I'm really, really hoping that you guys are going to be nice to me on this pick. We have an Acolyte of Pain. We have the Water Elemental. This is actually not an easy pick. And then third, we've got another Flame Strike. So we've covered Flame Strike, Acolyte of Pain, draw power galore, um, particularly with the Mage, because of course I can use my hero ability to ping this Acolyte and do damage to him and draw. The Water Elemental, let's not discount him or it, uh, freezing any character that this minion damages this gets insanely annoying even in constructed and ladder, ladder decks because with that pressure you're just freezing characters and the hero can't do anything um, two votes for the water elemental um, you guys have gone against the draw power but because of the votes water elemental it is I hope I get some and three votes for the water elemental in the end so a totally unanimous chat next we have the elven archer the mirror entity and the argent squire Elven Archer does what it says on the tin, maybe a little bit underpowered in the stat department, but that battle cry when you play it into play of doing one damage means that it can pick things off, it can remove some bubbles, all kinds of stuff, so not bad. Mirror Entity, Secret, um, summoning a copy of the minion, um, it is expensive, it is at 3 mana, but if I play this later in the game, then I'm possibly more likely to get a bigger minion if my opponent for some reason plays a huge 6 or 7 minion and I immediately summon a copy, uh, that can mess up my opponent a little bit but it is situational it is very very much a question of when you play it and if you get it it's not hugely reliable last but not least we've got the argent squire 111 again but i could have a battle cry of one damage or i could have the divine shield um, we've got a little bit of a toss between the two um, one for argent squire one for elven archer actually this occasion i'm going to go with the elven archer i like that one damage it may save my life someday Next up, we have another Acidic Swamp Boots. We have another Stranglethorn Tiger, who really wants to be picked, because I think we've seen him three times so far. And another Flame Strike, and again, that's the third time that we've seen Flame Strike. So I've actually covered all of these cards already. What we just need is for the chat to make a decision. I'm going to take a short sip while you have a little mull over that one. And then we can crack on through. Unanimously, the chat is picking Flame Strike. Lovely stuff. Keep on rocking. Next up we have again another reckless rocket here. We pick that because really there wasn't much else to pick on an earlier draft round. Another Frostwolf Grunt and then an Ice Lance too. So again we've covered all of these. Um, we will do a little deck review when we get to 15 cards when we've uh, drafted half of what our entire draft is going to be. So while well, the chat mulls over this is actually the 50th episode of the Hearthstone Half Hour. Uh, thank you very much to you all for sticking with us and getting involved. Um, it is great to have you here. Really, really happy that you all stuck with us and looking forward to doing a bunch more content to come. We have a vote or two for the Frostwolf Grunt. Um, two votes for the Grunt. Grunt it is. In the interest of keeping going. Next up we have Ifthralma. Farseer. We have an ice barrier again. There's the second ice barrier. And last but not least, we have a mana worm. So we've covered two of those. The throw off fast here. Again, you will see when you take a look at the key stats of a card. Have a look at the mana. Have a look at the sab and see what comes together. We have a vote for the mana worm. We've already covered how strong that is. Uh, the throw off fast here, um, mana wise. He is a little bit more expensive for his stats, but he then gets the win through ability so that if he stays alive, 
obviously, beyond his summoning, he can hit twice. <laughs> the Fraser. <laughs> I've probably said Fraser. We have a majority of votes for the Man Worm, so that is it. Right, we are at 16 out of 30, so I'm just going to do a real quick review of what we've got in our deck so far. Um, and when playing Arena, I very much encourage you, um, I'm no Arena Master, but what I would recommend is that you take a look at what you have in terms of maybe about halfway through, see what you've actually got, and then let that sort of influence a bit how you're going to draft the rest of your arena. Um, do you have a lot of cards in a particular part of your mana curve? Are you very, very late game focused? Are you very early game focused? Do you have maybe not too many minions? Do you have a huge bunch of spells? Um, so let's just have a quick look at what we've got. We've got a, a lot when it comes to turn two of mana. Um, we've got bits and bobs around the rest of the deck. Let's see what our deck is looking like at this point in time. We've got an Elven Archer and a Mana Worm in turn one. If we grab either of those, not only can we ping for a bit of damage, but we can have a fairly strong card in the Mana Worm if we cast a lot of spells. At this moment in time, note that we do not have any cheap spells. I think that's worth flagging. Um, turn two, well, turn two, our cup runneth over. We've got tech in the form of the acidic swamp, who's just a solid minion if we're not playing against a weapon deck. Two taunting Frostwolf grunts, so our opponent's going to have a tough time getting past us in the early game. An Iron Bicow for a nice little silence and sim. The Mana Addict again, going well with the Mana Worm. If I'm casting spells and got those on the table, I'm going to be buffing up. Um, so a very, very strong sort of two in early game in terms of those two drop minions, two mana cost. Tauren Warrior, three, if he comes out, then we can drop a, a damage on him maybe and do some sort of tanking. I've got a very, very strong early game tank here, lots of taunts, which is strong. Polymorph, lovely. Saving that for the later game, it will be strong. Sengen Shield Master, again another tank, so I've certainly got a lot of tanks and protection here. The Water Elemental could really annoy my opponent and the hero, particularly if I'm playing a weapon hero based deck. If I survive to turn 5, then my Frostwolf Warlord is a reasonable mid to late game pusher and finisher. The Argent Commander will allow me to trade. A Reckless Rocketeer will also allow me to trade and keep the minion table clear. And then, do you know what? In the late game, I've got clearance aplenty. I do have some good control with two flame strikes. So, having had a look at that, could I do with some more early game skills? Perhaps. Um, at the moment, this deck looks as though that we're putting down a lot of minions in the early game that are quite cheap. Uh, try to put some pressure on with those. We've set, also got a lot of protection, so we could be setting up to throw some big spells or some big minions down in the late game. So at this moment in time, we feel pretty strong in the early to mid game. Maybe we'd like some spells, but if we get strong minions or, or other minions that complement, I think that we can do quite well with what we have because we've got some good tanks. So next up, um, we have three votes for the Yeti. That was very, very simple. Um, we've covered the other two cards, but the Chillwind Yeti, um, really just for its mana cost and the stats that it has, nice, nice, strong, and it's what we've previously called in episodes of this show as just a solid spine card, a real core card um, that stats are strong and can come out and do some damage. Next up, we have the Iron Bical. We have got a Mog, a Mogushan. I always call it a Mogushan, and it's a Mogushan Warden and a Scarlet Crusader. So we've covered two of those in this episode already. The Mogushan Warden um, looks expensive at four mana, but you know what, that's a really awkward card. <laughs> One attack and seven health. You throw that down, it's gonna sit there and your opponent's gonna have to spend time picking and picking and picking and picking it away. And we almost have unanimous votes for the Crusader. Let's keep it going. Next, we've got a Mirror Entity. We have a Silverback Patriarch, and what is it with all of these tanks we are drawing? So many tanks, and then the third, last but not least, we've got a Frostbolt. So the Silverback Patriarch, the only card we haven't seen come up so far. Um, three mana, and again, you see these, this sort of trend with early game tanks. They either, you know, have low attack and very, very high health for their mana cost, or they try and have slightly more balanced stats and abilities, but their health is lower. So it depends on whether you want more offensive trading tanks or more sort of wall tanks. And this is very much a wall. It will sit there and soak up some damage in the early game when your opponent will be finding it hard, probably, unless it's a rush deck, to put damage on it. Um, Frostbolt is voted for. Frostbolt is grabbed. So next round we have a Sunwalker, a Young Priestess, and then the Wild Pyromancer. And that is a very, very strong three cards. We haven't had any of these three so far. The Sunwalker, um, Taunts, Divine Shield, real solid stats, slightly high mana, but the high mana cost for the stats is made up for by these two oh-so-strong abilities. You've got a bubbled, taunting tank. There is just a ridiculous wall. The Young Priestess, if you have a bunch of minions out in the early game, then that 
random friendly minion one health stacks up so quickly. You see it in Zoo Warlock decks at this point in time. It is cheap. Um, it buffs all of the cheap minions very, very quickly. And it's generally pretty strong in rushy, low minion -y decks. Or if you maybe drop it in the late game, it could make the difference. But that one mana is probably used better in other ways. The Wild Pyromancer is a brilliant tech card uh, that you can use to clear rushes. By rushes, I mean Hunter, I mean Zoo Warlock decks, maybe Shamans with low health minions. Casting a spell, dealing one damage to all minions. Works well in Priests, just if you, if you can up the health of that card. So it's some ridiculously effective removal. But we have a unanimous vote for the Sunwalker, so in we come with that. So next up, we have the Shattered Sun Cleric. We've got the Storm Wind Knight, and then we also have the Fireball. Shadow Sun Cleric um, buffs up your other minions for a 1 1, and then with 3 2, it can do a bit of trading too. So, a solid card in a minion based deck. Storm and Knight, low health, um, uh, sorry, high health, but a low attack, and a slightly lower mana cost. So, you are getting a charging card that can hopefully hit twice. And then there's nothing to say about Fireball apart from it is 6 damage straight to the face of something that you want out of the way. So, it looks as though the chat. And you guys have gone with a fireball. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm happy to have a few more spells going on. Next we have a war golem. A mirror entity again. We have a polymorph again. So we've drafted. We've seen all of these three before. So there's no real need for me to go over any of these again. Unless you're new and just joining us. Um, war golem solid late game finisher. Not really much more to say about it. The mirror entity. Um, a situational card that could or could not be useful depending on what our opponent is playing and if we actually get it and can play it in the late game. And last but not least we have Polymorph um, removing threats since Hearthstone started unanimous vote for Poly. Thank you guys. Next up we have a Chillwind Yeti again. Lovely stuff. We've got another Reckless Rocketeer. I think this draft is telling, trying to tell us something in terms of all of the crazy cards that are coming up. And then last but not least, the Silver Moon Guardian as well. So, a Divine Shield on the Silver Moon Guardian. If we have a look at our Sunwalker, he's maybe not quite as good. Um, he's the new card in this triplet that we haven't seen in the draft so far. And for the four mana, you'll be dropping him. He'll be trading something away with his Divine Shield. Um, and then he's probably going to be going down. Realistically, by the time four or five mana, when you get to that phase of the game and it starts hitting the table, um, there's going to be some sort of pain caused. Just taking a quick look at our mana curve, we've got a lot going on at four. We've got a lot going on at two. And it's actually two votes to the one uh, for the Silver Moon Guardian. For that tradeability. Um, I was tempted by the Yeti. I was generally tempted by the Yeti, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. We have an Iron Fur Grizzly next up in our draft. Almost getting there. We've got a Grim Scale Oracle and a Bold Fist Ogre. We haven't had any of these three, so for that 3 3 3, that is the, the, almost the definition of a balanced early game tank or card. The ability isn't too overpowered. The health and mana are all pretty much in sync with the attack. All of its core stats, mana, attack, health are sort of all in sync. It will do a cracking job at three mana of just sitting there and causing a few problems. The Grimscale Oracle is great if you're playing a Murloc deck, but we're not, so I th think that can probably be ruled out here. And the Boulder Fist Ogre, um, again, a solid mid to late game kind of finishing card. There's nothing huge that I can say about that. Um, a little bit more health. I'm going to take a quick swig when you guys decide, and when you guys do decide. Um, I will try and screenshot and stick this deck list up if it doesn't get too overly long to fill the right side of the stream on the right side of the video. Um, please do ignore the sketchy graphic design of my new um, my new uh, sidebar on the left. Um, I'm just looking for something permanent to cover one side of the board and then we can put the deck list on the other, just sort of playing a little bit with design. We've got a triple vote, um, a unanimous chat vote for the Grizzly from all you live viewers. Thank you very much. Um, next up, we've got another Mana Worm. Lovely stuff. We've got a Wolf Rider. Um, also lovely stuff. And then we also have a Spiteful Smith. Spiteful Smith. Now, for those of you who tuned in last week for our Priest Choose Your Own Arena, we saw Spiteful Smiths being thrown against us by people who didn't have weapons, and it was actually quite an awkward card. Reason for that being, high health, attack is okay, and although that for the mana cost, that enrage is not something you'll use, um, can be a pain. So, don't underestimate the Spiteful Smith, particularly if it gets health buffs. Uh, the Wolf Rider now, again, for the low health you get that charge ability for the three mana swings in does damage early game lovely stuff and then the mana worm that we've already gone over uh, good synergy with this deck but generally you need to be casting spells 
and at the moment, as we mentioned earlier in this deck with six cards to go, five cards after this, we are not hugely an amount of early game damage spells. Pick pardon. Early game damage spells are the things that will trigger this thing most. So we have votes for the Wolf Rider, and the Wolf Rider it is. Next we have another Argent Squire, We've got another Fireball, and another Grim Scale Oracle. Had all of these three before. It's actually quite hard for me when I'm drafting these and talking through the various cards not to influence you guys too much in terms of the pick. But it seems very, very simple, and the honest pump fireball straight up. Lovely stuff. Voodoo Doctor. I've got a mirror image. And a Thralmar Farseer. Very, very interesting how many tanking cards we've drawn in this deck so far. So we've got four draws left to go, including this one. So after this, we'll have but a three more cards. Um, Taking a quick look at our mana curve. We've got oh so much in the early game. Um, if we get to the late game, we've got a few finishes and things, but we've got a lot of tanks, a lot of taunts. Um, we are probably looking to be doing damage at this point with some of our spells and some of our mid-game minions. Um, have a vote for mirror image. We'll just wait while we get any more votes in and see what's coming through. So at the moment, looking at this deck, I'm feeling as though we need to flood our opponent with the minions in the early to mid-game and try and get some pressure on there and then by the time we get to the late game we still do have control and a couple of finishing options <laughs> and the vote on this one everyone is totally split we have votes for all in an even measure so I'm going to take my executive decision um, and be the casting vote so okay we are totally and utterly split lit on this card so what do we have we don't have much turn one but i think you know really we're swinging turn two um mirror image more taunts i'm not too sure about that the heal might be quite nice in the early game if we take some damage um although we do have a lot of tanks to hide behind and then the throw my farce here with wind fury might let us do some pressure and dual trades um oh so tricky i'm actually going to go with the throw on this occasion now I'm gonna go with the mirror image um, do I need more tanks I'm not entirely sure but mirror image just it's an awkward card it just causes your opponent's slowness and problems I think in this deck I'm gonna need some time to set up so with a mere three cards to draft we've got mana ray number one we've got the crazed alchemist we've got another mana addict as well it's all minions costing one more um, that slows me down um, in this deck, but if I wanted to stop my opponent from causing, you know, rushing loads of cheap minions onto the board, that might be an option. Um, Crazed Alchemist, swapping the attack and health of a minion can be pretty nasty, um, really, if you have a lot of high health minions. So if we had those things like that Mogushan Warden earlier, um, and we suddenly swapped its health and attack around instead of having one attack and seven health, seven attack and one health, well, we've got a huge finishing card there. Last but not least, the Mana Addict, throw spells, gain attack, happy days. It looks like a universal vote for the Crazy Alchemist. So thank you guys. In that goes two more to go. We're almost there. And we can now have a Mana Worm, a Water Elemental, and an Arcane Explosion. Um, the only real new card out of those lot is the Arcane Explosion. One damage to all enemy minions, two mana. If I had spell damage cards, and it is interesting, I've not seen a single, I don't think we've seen a single spell damage card in this draft. Um, not a single one. So it's kind of just as well that you guys haven't picked a bunch of spell power cards because or you know direct spell cards because we've not really had any spell damage to complement that either so we've got a very very minion focused mage deck here um looks like most of the votes are going in for the water elemental um and that's fair enough it's really cementing our our mid game control so i th think a water elemental it shall be let's grab it thank you guys water elemental and the final card we have an Alarmo pot. <laughs> we have a Defender of Argus and we have a Cold Light Oracle. Now the Alarmo bot, these are all new so we'll run through them. At the start of your turn, swap this minion with a random one in your hand. Brilliant if you wanted to trip. If, if it stays alive for that long and then you could suddenly pull out a really horrible minion but it's random, you don't get to choose. So if you could swap it for a specific minion in your hand, it lets you accelerate, lets you sort of, you know, ramp up your deck very, very quickly. Um, but because it's random, how many minions you've got in your hand, it could give you something good or bad. Defender of Argus, solid spine card, useful in so many decks. It buffs minions, it taunts, is it a bird, is it a plane? Um, it used to be three attack and three health. It got slightly down-tuned because it was 
a little bit over prevalent in quite a few decks you'd see it turning up everywhere but real strong and then the cold like oracle this i've actually seen turn up in quite a few constructed decks and why is that uh, cards that uh, decks that need to draw cards so quickly so crazy decks uh, like you know the Miracle Rogue, which tries to just draw so many cards and set itself up for a crazy late game combination. Um, or some decks, and interestingly, I've, there's not been huge amounts of this in Hearthstone, but decks that force card discard, because there's not huge amounts of cards that force your opponent to draw. A bar the North Shire Cleric in this cold like Oracle, as far as I can recall. Um, but each player drawing two cards, if you've got a full hand or you've gone second and your opponent starts dropping that, then suddenly you're having to discard cards from your already full hand. Um, the vote has gone with Argus. So let us jump into this game. I'm going to see one. Ooh, I just can't. I can't. I, I just can't fit that deck um, in a sort of screen captured sidebar. So you guys have gone for Defender. While we roll it up, we've got a. I'll just have a very quick look at the mana curve. We've got crazy amounts of <laughs> minions one through four, and not big amounts in the late game. So you guys have gone for a very minion aggressive deck. Um, with a lot of pressure in the early to mid game. I've got a lot of taunts, so I do have a lot of ability here. We can shield ourselves up, we can protect ourselves well, but to be able to win this game, we're going to have to be able to come out of the gate really, really strong and do a lot of damage early on with our minions. We don't have a lot of spells or direct damage that we can do to the enemy here, right? We can keep a reasonable amount of control in place. Um, we've got flame strikes. Jane we've got a few other bits and bobs that we can use. First game up, we have a rogue. Let's see what this yeah. uh, rouge has for us. You asked for it. Rogue first up. Starting hand. Well, I'd like some cheaper minions, as we've previously discussed. We want to be attacking from the off, so I'm I'm going to roll through those away. And because I'm going second and I have a coin, I could afford to keep some more powerful minions. You know what? That's a, a reasonable enough lineup. The Crazed Alchemist I probably won't drop straight away. The Wolf Rider will be good on turn 3. The Manor Addict will let us put some early game pressure down. So I'm just going to be knocking on the table. I'm not doing much at this point in time. Don't forget that the coin counts as a spell as well. Mind so if the purpose of the Manor Addict, that will trigger us up. Oh, why could I have not picked a Loot Hoarder? <laughs> That's such a nice solid card. I think it's just going to be a Manor Addict turn 2. Or do you know what? What we can do is just... The Manor Addict might get destroyed, it might get damaged. That is going to have to remove Put this um, apple on your head. the thing on the table. We'd have to get rid of that loot uh, order at some point or another, so we may as well do it in our favour. And uh, he's dropped a knife juggler, he's got some real nice solid spine minions. One of our options, I'd probably like to trade that off the table before it does more damage to me. I'm going to go in with the Wolf Rider and execute the trade. Um, I'm not really sure guys, I don't really think as to whether this is a rush deck or not. It's kind of a rush deck, um, in that we've got so many minions so early in the mana curve. Welcome Pekeli as well. It's good to see some new people in the stream. I hope you're very well disciplined as well. So, oh, pff, nasty, four drop, Ogre Mang, I spell damage, of course, rogues can benefit from spell damage. Things like Fan of Knives and other of their abilities. Um, so that is not such a bad drop. And of course, look at the solid 444 ness of it as well. It's got solid stats for its mana cost, and we are all about that. Do. What, what options do we have? Oh, I can drop a shield the master and get my taunt up. So he's not going to be running through me at any point in time. I could try and throw down another couple of cheap minions, but I'm not entirely sure how much that's going to do for me at this point. Uh, the water elemental was a really awkward play in that I'll start really causing him some issues. Um, I'm going to throw up the more solid So with five mana, let's see what our roguish friend has got up his sleeve. Assassin's Blade, ugh. And just look, three attacks, four durability, you can swing, swing, swing away so much. Now, lovely play, he's jumped in, his additional spell damage has benefited his backstab, and then he's just taken a small amount of damage on his hero, using his hero's health as a resource to pick it off and still keep his Ogame guy up. So I need to start finding ways to remove that from the table. Scarlet Crusader will let me trade something away. Um, he will be able to probably ping it with something in his hand. I'd quite like to remove that spell power. I'm actually going to go for quite an aggressive play here. The Sunwalker will be in reflection. I may have made an error. 
the Sun Walker might have been a very nice play. And the reason for that, just taunt into one shield, he will have to trade something away. So that could be a misplay there. At least I've got rid of the spell damage. Um, we'll see if he brings out something more nasty. Now, using Help of Jewels to trade that away. Send in Shield Master, and he can swing in. Probably he'll just go on my hero. There's no reason for him to attack the minion. And oh, a Murloc has come out as well. So I should have probably saved my silence for this Sinjin Shield Master. I've got a Flame Strike, so I can pretty much wipe the board with him next go. Loving a bit of that. Uh, will make things a lot easier. And what else can I do? Well, I've got six mana, so I can do quite a few nice options here. The Scarlet Crusader will allow me some trade power. I'm quite happy to that. The Mana Addict um, will. One enemy minions. I'm just making sure I don't make a misplay. If I do cast some spells, that will help. And then the Elven Archer, and that's one battle cry damage, will actually let me remove that dangerous charge. So the final thing I'm actually going to do is, strange enough, attack. Now, I freeze that minion so you can't attack. This is why this water elemental is so awkward. But I can also, if I want, I've got two flame strikes, so I can flame strike in and just remove all of those minions from the table. Again, he's frozen himself. I'm not happy with that because it means next turn he's not going to be. Ugh, ugh, horrible, 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 horrible. He's taken away one mana I think there's only really one play on this turn that I can go for, and that is the Happy Flame Strike. So, so good normally, but just in this draft pick, they're so good as well. So, I'm going to use my nice little um, Elven Archer. She proved invaluable in picking off two enemy minions, so nice trade power there. Ending my turn. We're actually not in a bad position. Health is a bit about even. Remember, of course, that even though my um, opponent froze themselves um, yeah, yeah, on their turn, it, it lasts through their next turn. That uh, Venture Co Mercenary, although it's made the minions cost more, dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. It's got enough attack to be finishing me off. So I need to either pick it off this turn, which I can actually do. I can go for the straight, very, very aggressive trade, um, or I could put up some walls against it. Uh, at this stage, I'm not going to put up walls against it. But I do have the uh, Splendid Archer in that one. He will let me do it. With that bubble, it is actually some disgusting in the game is execute that trade play. Uh, was there an interesting play that crazed Alk the Mist might have been able to? Um, I'm actually just going to throw up another tank. I'm not going to ping for one damage. Might be more useful at another point. That tank at least means that if he's going to swing away with his weapon now he's unfrozen, at least he has to get to that minion. Or if he's going to charge in with his blue girl warrior, to that. A sensible play there, he takes the two on his hero and then instead of taking the four with the blue girl. The Lepinome is going to hurt me for a bit of damage. The sound is a little too loud. Okay. Well, game. Let's just quickly sort out the sound for you guys, I don't want it to be too loud. Let's try dropping that master a little bit. In-game, splendid. Okay, so I'm not going to be crazed alchemisting in that leper gnome. I think the solid play here is to get down the tank. I will take it on the chin in terms of that 2 damage from the leper gnome. I've got a 4-5 Divine Shielded Minion. Thank you very much. Oh, a Doomsayer. If I cannot kill him in one turn, he will destroy everything. And you know what? That's a nice table clearance card. That's 7 health, and the 2 mana cost, he's not going to attack. His sole purpose is to be dropped if the field is full, and make your opponent force and focus on destroying him. So it's actually important enough, I'm going to use one of my two polymorphs on him. The reason for that being, I'm going to lead him out of the way. I do not want my only attacking minion. And as we know from you guys drafting this deck, I don't have loads of huge late game threats. I don't have loads of big late game minions. And we have a surrender! Congratulations, you viewers. You viewers have steered the good ship Failcraft to a 1-0 victory. Um, we've actually just gone slightly over a half hour, so what we're probably going to do is just sneak in one more game uh, for the recorded part of the show, and then we will jump off comms and continue playing this, but with you guys on the stream. So although it might not be voice commentated, um, we will be uh, doing other bits and bobs. Why didn't I alchemist it? <laughs> it's probably a an interesting option. Um, I need to have a think back and work out what that play was. Um, Gina 
There was probably a nice play with the alchemist there that everyone is talking about in the stream. And I'll be honest with you, I totally missed it. <laughs> so my bad. And that was going to make life easier. We were lucky with the surrender. So game two. <laughs> we have... I'm going to throw that alchemist back. None of those three are a good start. Um, Uh, what do we get in return? We have... Uh, okay. They'll, they'll, they'll do some options. Um, this was so useful. And a hello to you. Hello. I could save the Elven Archer um, to do the one damage rather than doing it to the hero. I'm actually not going to play anything turn one. Um, straight up coin and he's got a little knife juggler down. That's not nice at all. So, what options do I have? I can s certainly silence to take the effect away. A frostbolt for just straight removal. And I'm actually just going to remove straight away with a frostbolt. Um, knife jugglers are nasty. Reason being that in this mode, um, for arena, just summoning minions and doing damage even stronger than in constructed. Acidic swamp ooze is next up. So I can, I can just about drop and execute. So the one damage, I shouldn't have played that first turn, and it kind of vindicated the decision not to play the Elven Archer first turn, because at least I've got him under some control. What do we have? We've got a Fire Blast, picked off my Elven Archer, and he's put out that strong Mana Worm, as we discussed earlier in the game. So, I'm going to go ahead, a couple of options here, I'm actually going to go ahead with Lion B. Cullen Silence. Now, um, he's apologised, he probably means he's going to drop something more nasty. I could have dropped a Divine Cru uh, Shielding Scarlet Crusader for the trade next turn as well. I'm going to throw out a Mana Addict. I can pick this off next go. Oh... The Doom, sir. Very fair. Gotcha. Um, so, people pointed out to me if I had uh, um, done a bit of uh, alchemisting on that Doomstone oh, instead of a, a zero 07, I could 7 0 him. And that just wipes him off the table, I guess. That just destroys him. So, in the meantime, um, so yeah, a very nice uh, alchemist play that I could have dropped last game. Uh, Manor Addict. Has just been left all by itself. Sengen Shield Master, I'm going to need to get round, which is why I was a bit sad for what dropping that uh, Iron B. Cow. And in two games, I've dropped the Iron B. Cow probably a bit earlier than I should have done. Uh, I can gain some attack this turn if I throw some spells around. Um, all I can really throw around is the Fireball. I can pick off the Sengen. I'll get picked off in return. Mm. Thinking about trades, thinking about throwing down other minions. Maybe making things a little bit awkward. Best play here. I'd like to get rid of this as soon as possible, but if I'm leaving is is not particularly dangerous minion. I guess I can live with that. Well, the alternative is to get out my own minions that will do a bit more dangerous things. I'm going to go for the control play. And now I've got that 3 fee minion. I'm actually just going to slam straight into his hero. Mm, do I want to pick off this 1-1? One, one? Um, I'll pick off the 1-1. One, one. I'll go for wall control instead. An equally valid play there was because that 1-1 wasn't a huge threat, I could have just nailed some damage on his hero as well. In this mirror match, we now have the Water Elemental coming out. Little does he know that it takes two to tango, and there's more than one person with the Water Elemental. So I could throw out my own Water Elemental and start the whole sort of freezing jazz going on. Or I could throw out a couple of tanks and be really awkward. <laughs> so I'm going to throw out a couple of tanks and be really awkward. I'm not going to lose my mana addict just yet. There's no point suiciding it in. Um, so we can stick a little bit of pressure on that. Fireball! Fireballs are flying around all over the show. Now we can just go straight in for my hero. The fire blast. He's trying to remove that. Maybe he's just going for that. Mm, removing the tech. Okay. He's trading down. So I now have an opportunity to pick off I'm going to pick him off the table, which is nice. Let's get rid of that and throw down one of my own. Your move, Sherlock. I'm sorry. So many apologies. 
And if you do get fed up with someone emoting a lot in Hearthstone, right click the hero and hit squelch. Uh, well, he's using all his fireballs on minion clearance, and he's going to try and saw me with an Imp Master. But little does he know that I have flame strikes in my deck. He does. <laughs> oh, speak of the devil. There is the flame strike. So I can afford, given the uh, he can't buff these with anything that I know. So I can afford to spend one turn um, in sort of control mode. So I'm going to offer him the option of trading. If not, I can trade for his Imp Master next go. I don't actually need to throw down a flame strike right now. It is worth keeping in case he gets some more nasty minions out on the deck. Okay, he's gone ahead and removed me. The dark scale healers healed a few things up, but I can still flame strike now. It's just a shame. On uh, do I have? Yeah, I've. Do you know what? I can remove it all. I'm just going to remove it all. The flame strike. And I just can't help. One little. I'm sorry. Just one little. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've I've had three. I'm sorries. Four. I'm sorry. So just forgive me if I do give that little. I'm sorry back. Twilight like Drake. Oh, he's got a very strong mage draft here. <laughs> the Twilight Drake, of course, getting more, one more health for each card you have in your hand. So just solid, solid, solid. Nothing else to say about it. It is awkward. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm going to give him my own share of awkward. So the Defender of Argus, I could have saved that for some more nasty minions, but... Um, do you know what? Two one threes and a two three. He's going to have a think. If he really wants to pick me off, he can. There you go. There's one big trading. I can trade his away. Oh, dark scale healers coming out now. Two of those, and of course that ability to freeze uh, heal two healthful characters. He picked off the defender of Argus, the only one that could actually do some damage. And note that in my major draft, I didn't even get an arcane intellect. That was annoying too. We were a little bit unlucky with our draft, I feel, guys. I'll be honest with you. Right, I'm just going to remove that awkward, annoying card. I'm going to ping that, and I'm going to do one to his hero. I'm kind of setting this up for a trade. If he wants to go through my tank and trade away my Argent Commander, then he can. Um, but I just don't know what he's got. The thing at the moment to note is that, although I've got a few more cards left, he's only played one Arcane Intellect more than me, but he's got a card advantage on me. I'm not too happy with that. Um, we didn't see any Arcane Intellects. Um, welcome, Daliosaurus. It's great to have you with us again this evening as well. Good to see all of you guys coming back to the stream and tuning in. It's great to have you here. That go, we, we had all sorts of other nastiness dropping. The mirror images have been uh, removed. The Nomish Event, let's let him draw another card. Flesh Eating Ghoul gains attack whenever minions die, so I need to kind of kill that one first. And then the hero power just pinging me and pinging me and pinging me. Very, very frustrating. So, the thing that can become most nasty most quickly is actually this Flesh Eating Ghoul. So, although I could remove the Dark Scale Healer, I then just make the Flesh Eating Ghoul a 3 3. Um, so. So on balance, if I make that a 3-3, he can sacrifice that to make it a 4-3 and then start trying to do trading plays with what his Fire Blast. Um, but he can equally have it the other way round. Um, correct play here, it's a 50-50. Removing this, he can still do the 4 damage with this minion. If I remove that, he can sacrifice and do 4 damage with the other minion. On balance, I'm going to go for that one, drop that trade. Um, but then I'm going to reduce the health of that minion one, so I can try and get rid of it. Actually, I think you know my my gut instinct of removing that flesh eating ghoul would probably have been the correct one. He could buff up with the sacrifice here by one more. And, oh. Faceless manipulator comes out. I've got a couple of those in my warrior deck, um, but just being able to copy another minion on the table. Strength Incarnate. A really, really nasty play. And you can see that he's now just managed to trade me away with a Frostbolt as well as everything else. Pinged me, Frostbolted me, traded me away with his Gnomish Inventor of all things, and suddenly the tables have turned and our opponent is in a sickeningly strong position. So, what am I going to do here? Well, I can't remove that tank, which is frustrating. Or I can remove that tank, but I then buff this minion up further. So there's no real option for me but to do this, but that gives him a 7-2 minion. Now you can see why I should have removed this card. I should have removed this card when I had the chance, because now I've let it snowball to a level where it's become unsustainably big. 
and it's very unlikely that I'm actually even going to draw something that will let me pick that off. So this could be good game. Um, and I'll take this on the chin, guys. That was my misplay. I made a decision to go for the immediate threat when I really should have had a look at the bigger threat. I think it's loser as well from the chat. <laughs> I've let you down. I've failed you. But it's a good learning. If you've got threats that snowball, then you need to remove them ASAP. Well, I can fireball. Now, if I remove that earlier, the fireball could have removed this water elemental. Well, I think this is probably a loss unless I draw a miracle draw. So we have our opposition here, uh, probably thinking about how he's going to finish us off. And I won't say us, I'll say me, because it was my responsibility in that play. My apologies for that. You can freeze me, you can ping me down to sort of a 9 health, maybe he's um, potentially able to sort of put some pressure on. Um. Unless he's disconnected, unless our friend here is disconnected, but you can see that the mouse over coming over our hero over himself, and there's me thinking of wishful thinking. Well played. well played to you, opponent. We've got a flame strike. I could slow things down. Now our opponent's at the keyboard here. I don't see why he's taking so long. It's not really necessary. Um, he's mousing over minions, or she is mousing over minions. Um, they are just stalling for the point of stalling, really. They probably just hit and turn just before the end, or maybe not. Uh, so they mm, probably have an execute on me here. I'm not going to surrender, I'm going to let them finish this off. I'm sure they have the opportunity to do so. They can do 8 damage, I just need 1 damage in their hand. They've got a minimum of charge, they've got a spell. Hmm. So, our opponent is just, I think he's really just wasting time now. So, in the interest of finishing up. Um, let's, let's be sporting and give them a little bit of time if they want to finish. Thank you. Please finish, otherwise I'm just going to surrender. And this is the kind of thing, guys, if you're playing Hearthstone, it's not really necessary, you know, you're going to win. You could just finish things off and, and make it a nice sort of courteous game. So, no need to stall out, just finish things off, send a well played and keep going. We all have little moments. Now, you can tell he's stalling because suddenly he'll decide to attack with all his minions and do everything in a few seconds, which is a bit pointless. Thank you. Watch, he's sort of almost playing a game. He's going to try and throw everything at me. Uh, <laughs> or not. <laughs> I have no idea what this person is doing. Well, I still can't attack that stealthing minion. Swapping the attack and health of a minion. Okay, let's see what they're doing. Um, okay, so I can, I can set up a trade. Swapping the attack and health of a minion. I still can't target the stealth minion. Well, what I can do at least is do a bit of removal. I'll go for the removal and get it off the deck. Oh, I'm frozen, you can pick me off. X, Y, Z, A, B, C. Um, what else can I do? Not loads. I'm just going to pick him for one. <laughs> So uh, he's kind of just sort of delaying this game really for no particular reasons. Note that he hasn't even sort of, you know, he's swung in for another four damage. Fine, I can drop a poly. I can trade some stuff away here. I can leave him with a master swordsmith. This is really only going one way. Um, but hey, let's play it. 
We can poly. We can trade. <laughs> if he really wants to string this, uh, this real, uh, if he really wants to string this game out, then he can. <laughs> we'll be finished shortly. So, guys, while we wait for the painful end of this game, I will uh, continue playing afterwards on the stream. I'll just drop off the microphone uh, to save my wiser half my continuous chatter. Um, the immensely patient and wonderful person that she is. So. Mm. So we are still waiting for our opponent to finish. So while we're waiting for our opponent to finish, just a quick shout. Um, we do of course try and do this four to five nights a week. Uh, Monday is new player and deck tech, where we have take a look at new player concepts and deck garage kind of things. Uh, Tuesday we will always do arena like this. We start doing pick your own arena the last couple of weeks. It's been quite fun, so we'll continue that. Wednesday is ladder attack, where we just go on the ladder. And not only look at the deck that we are playing, but also other decks that are out there and just see what the ladder's like in general. Um, Thursday we will take a look at some more in-depth strategy concepts, so we'll go to something which is a bit more for intermediate players, and then Friday we'll either play some fun Hearthstone, maybe play some games against you guys on the stream, sort of play viewer games, or we will just play another game entirely. Um, what's going on this week? Um, a bunch of fun games coming out. Child of Light has come out from Ubisoft, I'd really like to have a look at that, um, amongst some other things as well. So we've kind of lost here, um, unless our opponent is really going to continue messing around, I'm just going to forfeit. So we can get on with our lives and have a little bit of a chat too. Okay, so for you guys who are watching live, don't go away, we will continue these in a second. Uh, for you guys who are watching on the archives, thank you very much for watching. As a bit of a roundup, that was our schedule. Um, we love to hear from you. Uh, please do drop us a tweet at failcraftcasts on Twitter, we're always there when we're not streaming. Fellcraft.org is the website where you can find all of our videos with blog articles accompanying them and some new player links. We do do other games apart from Hearthstone, a whole bunch of Blizzard games and are looking to increase the amount of games we do in the future. So if there are games you'd like to see, let us know. YouTube.com forward slash Fellcraftcast. If you miss an episode or if you want to look back at the previous 49 episodes of the Hearthstone Half Hour, we've got to a half century of episodes, 50 episodes, really excited about that. Thank you for sticking with us. Um, you can find those at YouTube.com forward slash Fellcraftcasts. Please subscribe, comment, let us know what you like. And if you do like the stuff, if you could share it with other people, that'd be amazing. Absolutely love it. And last but not least, um, if you are watching this on YouTube and you want to see more and you want to get join in live with all of the drafting action, come and see us at twitch.tv forward slash fellcraftcast um, and there you can subscribe you can get a free account on twitch it's no problem and then you can get email notifications when we go live we tend to be live 7 30 or around 7 30 to 8 p.m gmt monday through friday but you can see that on twitter and you can catch up with there so thank you very much for tuning in all of you folks who are watching um later um, and all of you guys